question. Is there a possibility that you could have been told wrong concerning Simon? Or is there no possibility, there in no world, in no universe that you are wrong? And I pray every time I'm reading the Bible so that I can get an understanding. I don't just listen to what anybody says. I'm, a, I'm gonna go back and read it for myself and study for myself. The white man, there's no salvation there. The China man, there's no salvation there. The Arab man, there's no salvation for him. Everybody see goes back, 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 goes
When the words is read in the Bible, you know what that means? What it means? It means Jesus is speaking, right? So these words are read. What did Jesus say? But he answered and said, uh -huh. I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now Jesus out his own mouth, he tells us that he's only come for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, right? Now, in the church today, the modern church today, they tell us, no, it's a new covenant. We are all under, we all under Christ. It don't matter if you're an Israelite. It don't matter if you're a Gentile. It doesn't matter. None of these concepts matter anymore. Listen to what the Bible says. Go to Hebrews 8. Read it again. And we don't, we don't keep bringing scriptures out until you find your scripture, Asia. Read Hebrews chapter 8, verse 8. Uh -huh. For finding fault with them, uh -huh. he said, Behold, the day is come. The day is coming on the earth that what? Said the Lord. When I will make a new covenant. We all heard this term, new covenant. You heard that term before, right? Okay, okay. So there was an old covenant and a new covenant. In the Old Testament, exactly. In the Old Testament, God was only for the Israelites. In modern religion, Christianity today, they teach under the new covenant, the whole world can accept God in Jesus' blood, right? But let's see if that's what they say. Read it again. I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel uh -huh. and with the house of Judah. The house of Israel and the house of Judah is only people that the two covenants are for. The problem is the house of Israel do not know who they are. What we're here to tell you is you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you make up the 12 tribes of Israel. That's right. You are the real Jews. You are the right. Israelites. And the Bible is written for you and only you. That's now, right. I know Asia is boiling hot right now. And she got her scripture. You got your scripture? What's your scripture, Asia? I'm in Ephesians uh, 2. Let's go to Ephesians 2 for Asia. Ephesians 2 oh, is a lovely scripture. I love that scripture, actually. That's a wonderful scripture to go to. Let's go to Ephesians 2. Which verse do you want to you want to start, Sister Asia? Okay. Um, Let me know. Let me figure out which, which one. Okay. Um, verse, start at verse 5. We're going to start at verse 5. Let's look at Asia. Read you back. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 5. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Okay. Now. Was that it? Or are you going to keep going? going? Okay, read. Go Verse 7. Way, go, all the way that, through, go all the way through 14. We're going all the way to 14, Asia. Do you know what is that points that you want? So we go precept for precept? That's a lot of reading to do. What are the points do you want to feel? My point was that, because earlier I had said that. No, which verses, which points, where is your first? All right, we're going to read the whole thing for Asia. Because we don't want anybody to say that we are running from the scripture. I want you to read it fast. Read you got. Yes, sir. Verse 7. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. Read. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto, go unto good works, uh -huh. which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Read. Wherefore, remember that ye be in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision. Now let's stop here. Asia, what does that mean? The uncircumcision is talking about the Jews. I mean the Gentiles. All right, the read verse 11 Gentiles. one more time. Wherefore, remember that ye be in time past. The Bible says in time past, read. Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision. Now, let me ask you. Sister Asia, what is a Gentile? Does anybody got these honor papers? Somebody get these honor papers. Hurry up, hurry up. So we got to get you the proper definition of a Gentile. Somebody got it? He, got, he getting it, he getting it. Give us one second, right? And we're going to read that one more time. Yes, sir. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past. So in time past, you were what? Gentile. So, now, let's just use your definition for the sake of this, right? 
how can somebody in the past be not a Jew? Can they now be a Jew? So, make this make sense. Because he says, in time past, you were of the uncircumcision. What does that mean? When I read this, it, when I read this, it's talking about in time past being the, uh, there are the flesh. So that's just saying over time you you are called uncircumcised because you were Jews. Because you were what? Because you you were not Israelites. Yes. See, that's that's see, that's where your misinterpretation comes in, mm -hmm. right? Because you have a improper definition of what a Gentile is. Right? I'm gonna show you right. Listen to this. Read what you got. The Zonovan Bible Dictionary. Gentiles, nation, people. Usually, it means a non-Israelite people. So the Bible says, usually, it means a non-Israelite people. What does the word usually mean, Asia? Most of the time. Most of the time. Usually, right? So, in the times that it's not a non-Gentile people, what is it? If it's sometimes it means non-Israelite people, what is it when it's not talking about a non-Israelite people? Do you know? Go ahead and say it. We're gonna give you the understanding. How oh, all praises, all praises. So what you what a lot of people fail to realize is when we get to the when we get to the New Testament here and Paul is going to the Gentiles, he's going to scatter Israelites. He's going to scatter Israelites because a lot of people have a they don't understand the Old Testament. That's why when they get to the New Testament, they get confused. I'm going to show you what I mean. Go to Deuteronomy 4.27. Because there is a Pacific... But you didn't even... But you didn't finish... You didn't... Well, we going we, we go, we go to stay in Ephesians. We're not done with Ephesians. Okay. But we can't just read on if you don't even understand what 11 says. We're going to read on in 19 if you don't understand them. We have to get the full concept. Or if we don't, then you're going to take it out of what? Yeah, you go ahead. If you don't understand the whole thing, you're going to take something out of context. Right, Rich, you got? Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 27. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations. The Bible says it was a curse that the Israelites would be scattered through the nations. Right? And ye shall be left few in number among the heathen. Amongst the heathen. When we went into these different Gentile nations, we became like these heathen. For example, when... We, we were separated from our mothers here in America. We became Americans. But our true identity is an Israelite, right? I'm going to give you an example. Go to First Maccabees. Because a lot of people don't have the historical references to why Paul is on his ministry in the first place. The reason Paul is going out to these different churches is because there are Israelites scattered throughout the whole world. And they have, have to become back to the covenant of God. I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Six. Twenty dollars at the corner. What's your name, my buddy? How you doing, bro? No, we out Wait a minute. You still watching? <laughs> Why you ain't subscribed? Then hit the button. Just listen. To me. That's your you got it. Six verse nine. I'm gonna show you something, right? Because there's history missing out of the, your Bible. What what version do you have, by King James. King James sixteen eleven. See, you gotta get you a King James sixteen eleven Bible. That's the first issue. Bible that was authorized by King James in the 1600s. It's 14 books that's taken out of the Bibles that we have now that the Protestant church took them out. White people took them out of the Bible. Why? Because it's exposed the lies that's going on in the church. I'm going to show you one of them. Read what you got. 2 Maccabees chapter 6 verse 6. We're going to start at verse 1 because a lot of people say there is neither Greek nor Jew and they don't understand what it means. Right? Read what you got. Verse 1. Not long after this the king sent an old man of Athens. An old man of what? Of Athens to compel the Jews to depart from the laws of their fathers. So, Sister Asia, where is Athens at? Athens. Athens is in Greece. So, when we get to the term in the New Testament, there is neither Greek nor Jew, and we see that in Romans, a lot of our people get confused. Why didn't it say it's neither Jew nor Roman? Because they're in Rome, right? Why is it saying Greece? We 
gonna give you the historical references on why I'm saying that. Read that one more time. What happened? Not long after this, the king sent an old man of Athens. So the king of Greece sent to Jerusalem, to the Jews, a man from Athens, which is the capital of Greece. Read. To compare the Jews to depart from the laws of their fathers. Their goal was to get the Jews to stop keeping the commandments of God. Right? So the Greeks wanted the Jews to stop keeping the commandments of God to the extent that they would do what? We're going to jump down to verse 6. Verse 6. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days. They outlawed the Sabbath day. So they made it illegal for you to keep the Sabbath day. As a Jew, that's the commandment of God to keep the Sabbath. So they made it illegal. Read. Or ancient feast. Uh -huh. Or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. Now, under the rulership of the Jews, we you go to you go to this college here. So in history, they teach you about the reign of Alexander, about Ptolemy, about these different Greek rulers that were set up. At this time, is a man by the name of Antiochus. He made it illegal for you to call yourself a Jew. That's like right now, every all black people was given a decree. We can never, no longer call each other black no more. Have to find something else. That's what they did to us back then. We could no longer call each other Jews anymore. But what did we have to call each other? And in the day of the king's birth, every month, they were brought by bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifices. And when the feast of Bacchus was kept, the Jews were compelled to go in procession to Bacchus, carrying ivy. Moreover, there went out a decree to the neighbor cities of the heathen by the suggestion of Ptolemy against the Jews that they should observe the same fashions and be partakers of their sacrifices. And do what? And whoso would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles. Now, all the Jews that did not forsake the covenant and become Gentiles. So, so what's the other definition? Is a J Israelite who has forsaken the covenant of God and start to keep the customs of the Gentiles. The Greek fascists, they started to worship Hercules. So all the Jews that didn't want to worship Zeus, uh, uh, Poseidon, and all those Greek gods, all the Jews that didn't want to do that, what happened to them? Should be put to death. They were murdered. So there was a forced conversion in the time of the Greeks. So now when we get to Paul and his ministry, He's going to the descendants of those people who was forced to become Greeks and showing them that they are the Israelites and they have to come back to the covenant. That's why we get to go back to Ephesians. Now we go back to Ephesians, we get better understanding of what he's saying in verse 11. Read verse 11 again. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 11. Uh -huh. Wherefore, remember. Remember the historical reference. That's the problem we had. We didn't remember. Read. That ye... Being in time past. What time? The time of the Greeks. Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision. But you was called by the Jews who were still under the covenant uncircumcised. Why? Because you were, you, if you, your peers was forced to become Greeks, you grew up, you didn't know nothing about God. You learned all the Greek pantheon. You didn't circumcise your children. You didn't know anything about the covenant of God that belonged to you. You didn't know about your rich heritage. Paul is giving it back to them. Read. In the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ. And during that time when you was following those Greek gods, you was out without Christ. Read. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. Of what? Of Israel. It was aliens from what? Of the commonwealth of Israel. So he's talking to other Israelites. But during this time period when they was worshiping false gods, they was aliens from the covenant. God had cut them off. Read on. And strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Now we're going to keep reading for Asia's sake, right? But now in Christ Jesus, Ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between now, us. He said now he has made us both one and broken down the middle wall of partition. Right? Now this is also going back to prophecy. Right? Because are you familiar with the King Solomon? 
Did you know King Solomon had a uh, terrible sin that he committed? What was his sin? King Solomon's sin was that he started to marry wives oh, of yeah, the of other nations. Other he other had nations a thousand wives. They were worshiping and, false gods. And they was worshiping false gods. The judgment for that was there was a divide in the nation. There was a divide from these top three tribes, which was the house of Judah, and the rest of tribes of the house of Israel. Now he said, Jesus Christ has come to put an end to this. I'm going to show you this. One more scripture, and I'm going to turn it back over, because I know you you uh, you got something to say. Then we're going to go to Ezekiel. Go to Ezekiel. You know what I want. Perfecting church. You go to perfection? All oh, praises. All oh, praises to the most high. How you doing, sis? I'm good. How are you? What's your name? Tierra. Tierra, good. We're we going we gonna, to we in a deep biblical study. And y'all believers of Christ, so this is a good thing right here. I enjoy this. This makes my teeth white. But what we're finding out, a lot of things we learned in church are not true. For example, we're going to give you one. Read what you got. Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 16. Now, we're going to read verse 22. Yes, sir. Verse 22. Now, look, Asia. Now, remember, he said there will no be no more any divide. This is the divide that was occurring between the Jews and the Gentiles. This is it. And I will make them one nation and the land upon the mountains of Israel. Now, this prophecy has not happened yet. Yeah. He said he's going to make them one nation in the land of Israel. And one king shall be king to them all. Who is the king? Jesus Christ. Absolutely. Read. And they shall be no more two nations. The two nations were the kingdom of Judah and the kingdom of Israel. The Jews and the Greeks. The Jews and the Gentiles is always been dealing with the Israelites, though, right? Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. So we we'll go back to that at Ephesians. So this is that middle wall of partition. There was a divide between these two, two different nations in the house of Israel or the circumcision and the uncircumcision. That's what it's talking about in the New Testament. But you have to have these historical points that you can be able to identify to go precept upon precept. You understand that, Asia? I understand. You, I mean, I was the one that said precept upon precept. All right. I'm not saying, I'm not denying that you didn't. I just want to make sure it's clear to you. So when we get to the New Testament and you hear Paul is sent to the Gentiles, he's sent to the northern kingdom of Israel as well as the Jews that were forced to convert to being Greeks. And not only just Greeks, it was other, there was other, like when you go to Acts 2, go to Acts 2, Acts 2, because it was, it was Jews throughout all the, all, uh, the, the, uh, modern land at that time. I'll use those words, right? Acts 2 and verse 5. Mm -hmm. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation. Every nation. What nations was there? Under heaven. Verse 9. Parthians. And Medes and Elamites and the dwellers of Mesopotamia but that, but that was and in Judea and in Cappadocia. Now, my point is that there was it was Israelites throughout all the nations at the time. Now, some were Israelites who kept the covenant. Some they did. And they had to be brought back because they was considered Gentiles. You understand that? I'm following what you're saying. But do you understand? We can fully break it down. I, I want to go step by step. So far, are you with me? I'm with you. I'm gonna go, let's go to Matthew. We're going to show you another example. Okay. Maybe because precept upon precept. You believe in precept upon precept. So we give you another precept. Go to Matthew 4. Right? Or is it Mark 4? Yeah. Listen good. Listen good. You with me? Matthew chapter 4 and verse 15. Uh -huh. The land of Zebulon. Do you know where Zebulon is? Uh, I don't know. Zebulon is in Israel, in particular, it's in the north. So it's considered the northern kingdom of Israel, right? Mm -hmm. Read on. And the land of Naphtali. And Naphtali is also in the north, right? By the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. Now you've seen what these two particular tribes were called by Christ himself? What did he call it? Zebulon, which is one of the tribes, and Naphtali. What did he call them? Galilee what? Galilee of the Gentiles. Because they were part of the house of Israel that was cut off from the uh, 
the southern kingdom being the Jews. I'm going to give you another example. We're going to go to the well. Go to John. Here you got. John chapter 4 and verse 7. Mm -hmm. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For her disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Jump down to the other point. Yes, sir. Verse 12. Art thou greater than our father Jacob? So uh, initially the conversation starts as he says the Jews have no dealing with the Samaritan. Yeah. But she states that what? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself. But her being a Gentile, a Samaritan, she also knew that she was of the lineage of the Israelites. Showing what? The Gentiles that's going to be saved, they're, they are in particular Israel only. I'm going to show you. Because there are some Gentiles that cannot be saved at all. Did you know that? Give me an example. I'll give you an example. Let's go to, for example, one example is Esau. Do you know who Esau is? Who is Esau? Esau is, um, the Esau is the brother of Jacob. How y'all brothers doing? Y'all y'all know who Esau is? We're going to go to Romans now. Right? Esau is the brother of Jacob. Right? Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Jacob is our ancestor. We come from the 12 tribes of Israel. These 12 sons are sons of Jacob. And we're going to Romans, right? Now, Esau, who is Jacob's brother, listen to what God said about him. Because he is also a Gentile. But he is not the Gentiles that Christ is sent for. Read. Romans chapter 9, verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. The Bible says God hates Esau. Now, if we know, I don't know if you know this, but that we are descendants of Jacob. Did you know that prior to today? Yes. Yeah. Or you still don't know that? Go ahead. Right, that's a question. Go ahead. I'm, I'm going to listen to what you're saying. Do you know? It's a yes or no question. No. So, okay, okay. So, now we're going to go into that as well. It's proving that we are the descendants of Jacob, right? But we know for a fact that we are the descendants of Jacob. So, who are the descendants of Esau? The people that he hates. But who are they today? I'm telling you, Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are Jacob. Who is Esau? Who are you going to say, the white man? Wait, is that what I'm gonna say? I'm just, I'm just making a joke. You making a joke? Yeah. But your joke is true. That's right. We gonna go to Genesis. We gonna go to Genesis. Let's go to it because this is historical proof. Because all Gentiles won't be saved, but all we have to worry about. All Gentiles won't be saved because if you don't follow the, you don't follow the doctrine of Christ. No, only the Israelite Gentiles will be saved. I'm gonna be more clear. The Nobody only people that can be saved are the Israelites. Oh, nobody, right. Nobody's going to be saved if you're not following. Did you hear what I said? I heard what you said. The white man, there's no salvation for him. The China man, there's no salvation for him. Right. The Arab man, there's no salvation for him. What about the right. mixed people? No such thing. I'm mixed. There's I'm no mixed. such thing. I'm saying my What's your father? My grandma's white. Your grandma is my, my wife? My, my daddy is, is, is Creole. All right, that's good. So Creole, meaning Creole, I mean, you come like, from the tribe of Levi. But, but Creole people are, are historically mixed with white people. Right? I'm going to show you something. Right? I'm going to show you something. The first thing I'm going to show you, what I had you going first? We're going to show you who Esau is first. Then we're going to show you there's no such thing as being mixed. I'm going to show you. Of course, because we found in our stuff of the Bible, not you the know, white man's science. I'm asking you a question, though, because you, cause if you're going by people's fathers, somebody got to... All right, let's get that first. Let's get that first. We're going to show you there's no such thing as being mixed. Let me show you. Listen to this. Read what you got. Numbers. Numbers, chapter 1 and verse 18. Uh -huh. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their father. So your pedigree, your bloodline is determined by the house of your father. That's why when you leave, read. J Jesus' bloodline, it says, this man begot this man, this man begot this man. So your grandmother, who might be white, has no bearing on what your nationality is. What about what about the ones that have white fathers and black mothers? What, what, about, what about them then? They are Edomites. Mm -hmm. They're so Edomites. They, they, they gonna, they gonna, There's no uh, salvation for them. 
Okay. Is they're Edomites. That uh, bloodline. So they can be black as me, mm-hmm. but their bloodline, because it's a bloodline thing, it's not a it's not a color thing. Yeah. It's your bloodline. It's the seed. That's why you speak, the Bible speaks of a seed, a royal seed. This seed will be saved. Read now, Everybody let's go back. Seed goes back, goes back, goes back to, to black people. You said what? So if everyone's seed goes back to black people, That's then good. what? Everybody's seed go back to Adam, who's a black man. Yeah, so I good. agree. Go, then what? Second evidence. Let's show you then what. We're going to show you what. You ask the question, you're going to answer. You answer biblical question, you get a biblical answer. Okay. Right? Let's give, go to Second Ezra. Read what you got. Second Ezra, chapter 6, verse 54. Uh-huh. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all. We all come from Adam. Well, you come from Adam. They come from Adam. They come from Adam. All these people come from Adam. Read. And the- I didn't, look, when I'm saying stuff, is not against you. I'm just making statements. Okay. So if I say something, is I'm not saying that you don't have this information already. I'm just saying, just, uh, read it one more time. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all, and the people whom also thou hast chosen. The people who God has chosen is useless. You are one of God's chosen people. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Everybody comes from Adam, but God chose a particular people, the Israelites. Read them. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. This entire planet was created for the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. The entire planet, everything that's moving, the sun, the ground, the dirt, the air, the clouds is all created for us. Read. As for the other people. But it's other people. We just see some Arabs walk by. We got uh, our neighborhood white woman. Our teachers, they white, they are white and jolly. What about them? Read. Which also come about them. Thou hast said. This is what God said. Samson didn't say this. Asia didn't say this. We didn't make this up. That they are nothing. No, they are friends. That they are nothing. No, they blessed in the love of Jesus. That they are nothing. They can be saved. That they are nothing. They are nothing. This is why they forbid us to read in slavery. They didn't want us to know this. Read on. But be like a two spit. You know how you talk sometimes and maybe a couple drops of spit come out your mouth? That's what he said the rest of these nations that he made are. Read. And as like in the abundance of them unto a drop. That fall it from a vessel. So if you got a cup of water and one little drop fall off, do you care about that drop? No, right, Asia. That's how Asia, that's how God feels about them, right? But it's a key marker, a point that I want you to get before you walk away. Read. And now, O oh Lord, behold, these heathen, these other people, which have ever been reputed as nothing. But because before the Greek Roman in the American society, the whole world knew that these people were nothing. Right, Read. Have begun to be lords over us. Now there are teachers. Now they are judges. Now they are police officers. Now they pass legislation. Now they can become the president of the United States. And they ruling over us now because we don't know our true identity. We don't know we really the sons and daughters of Jacob. That's we the greatest thing walking. And as a matter of fact, Asia, we fight for them to get salvation when truly it's us. We the only people who need it. That's what do the white man need to be saved from? What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity.